sources for the laws of Shekhyan, at least some of the sources, is one of them is our Gemara and our Mishnah. Our Mishnah on page 54a, Brachas 54a, you see it says if one built a house or purchases new utensils or clothing, he recites Shekhyanu, page 60, it mentioned the opinion of Rabbi Yechanan, that even if one had previously purchased such items uh, and he still has them, he can recite this bracha again on additional purchases of this item. Uh, I wrote that he can recite. The truth of the matter is it, it, the, the terminology is really he should recite. I should fix that. Um, now, uh, the Gemara in Sukkah mentions when one prepares a lulav, which means he attaches the branches, the myrtle, the willow, and the palm, he attaches them together. Or when he builds a sukkah, he recites the shechiyan. So our Gemara spoke about buying new clothing. The Gemara in Sukkah talks about doing a mitzvah, of building building a mitzvah, either a, a, a putting together the lulav with the other branches or building a sukkah. He recites a shechiyanu, which is interesting. Nowadays, we recite the bracha when we first fulfill the mitzvah inside the sukkah, shaking the lulav. Um, and when we eat the first night in the sukkah, uh, we recite the shechiyanu both of those times because in the olden days, they would use a communal lulav and communal sukkahs and therefore there was no bracha to recite when they prepared it because uh, every person didn't prepare it it was prepared by one gabai one of the you know the it, people didn't do this so so and you the the building of the sukkah was 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 done by uh you know one person built the sukkah or two people or, or five people but the whole community used it so because of that um uh, people would mistake and not say the bracha shachyanu later for the holiday. So it became customary that everyone recites the shachyanu only when they actually fulfill the mitzvah, not at the time of the construction. Now, uh, Erevin 40b, 40b uh, page uh, source three, uh, that talks about the shachyanu on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So there's the shachyanu for building for for building this mitzvah or doing the mitzvah of sukkah and lulav and then as a shachiyanu that you recited on rosh Hashanah yom kippur the gemara said uh on the one hand you should say it because it's a mitzvah that comes from time to time it's like a, a seasonal mitzvah and it has a set time when it happens so that would be a reason to say recite a shachiyanu for rosh Hashanah and yom kippur on the other hand uh, it's not one of the three major holidays that involve rejoicing. So it's not exactly a time of rejoicing. It's a time of judgment. So the Gemara questions about the Shekhyano for those holidays. And um, Rabbi Yehuda says, he want, they, 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 they bring this uh, statement of Rabbi Yehuda that Rabbi Yehuda said, when I saw a new gourd, I recited upon it a Shekhyano. So uh, the Gemara there implies that um, for sure, you don't need a, uh, it to be a mitzvah that comes from time to time and it has a set time uh, when it happens. I, I recite a bracha on a new gourd. The Gemara answer counters and says, no, it doesn't really answer the question because we're not talking about matters that are okay or optional. We're talking about obligations. So the conclusion of the Gemara is that Shekhyano is recited on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Uh, but... Uh, we see in that Gemara this concept of a optional Shehechiyano bracha. So again, we've got these, now we have three sources. We have purchasing new clothing. We've got the, um, the uh, mitzvah bracha of a lulav and building a, building a sukkah. And then we have the Shehechiyano on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. And the truth is, we also see about reciting a bracha on a a new gourd in the Gemara there says that that seems to be an optional bracha. It's called rishus. So we have this idea of a optional shechiyana, which really these are confusing points and we're gonna soon see what needs to be reconciled. Uh, the, the fourth source is that the Gemara talks about the bracha on the hand fillin and the head fillin and the Gemara does not make mention of the shechiyana. So if you, uh, uh, if you get a new pair of tefillin or if you uh, uh, make your own tefillin, doesn't seem to say a shechiyano over there. But when you build, build a sukkah, we did say you do recite a shechiyano. 
So matters that need to be reconciled. So I just mentioned a few of the issues that seem to contradict each other. One of them is that tractate er Erevin, which was the source number three, it uh, implied that matters that happen from time to time receive the Shechianu Bracha, but tractate Brachas implies just buying new things, which have no specific time frame. Uh, they also require a new Bracha. So does it need to be something that has like a set time or not? And uh, to answer this question, the Gemara in Erevin um, argues on the Gemara in Brachas. One, one way of answering it is that the Gemara in Erevin is actually arguing on the Gemara in Brachas. And the only time that a Shachian is recited is on a mitzvah that comes from time to time, like holidays, and it has a set time. And no Shachian is recited on new clothing according to this, according to this the halacha follows the Gemara in Erevin, and this is the opinion of Rav Shri Regoyen. So Rav Shri Regoyen has this extreme view that um, basically it's only a mitzvah that has like a set time that you would recite Shachianu on. And that would be like the, uh, the 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 case over there of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the holidays. You have these are seasonal, and they have a set time when they happen. And that would be a time that you thank Hashem, Shehachiyano, you made me live until this time for those set times. Now, the other another answer given by Taisvis to answer this contradiction of does it need to be a set time, or could it be you know whenever you have new new stuff. So Taisus' answer is that there's two or more types of Shachiyano. One type of Shachiyano is for a mitzvah that's specifically recited for joyous mitzvahs that have set times with large intervals in between. And another type of Shachiyano is for things that bring great joy, but they don't need to have a set time, like buying new garments. So uh, the way Taisus uh, explained this is that there are two types of Shachiyanos. One of them is for things that bring joy, but doesn't need to have a set time. And, um, and that would be the case of buying new clothing. And therefore, it's not a contradiction, the two Gemaras. Because the Gemara that talks about uh, the, um, the uh, set time, that you have set times throughout the year for these holidays, that is for the holiday bracha of Shechiyon. But for something of great joy, that bracha shachiyano doesn't need to have set time. That bracha of shachiyano is when you buy new clothing, that would be a, a, a shachiyano that would require a shachiyano bracha. Now, the Rabbi, next country, yes. Uh, um, the ones that are uh, have a set time, it would imply that a woman doesn't make that shachiyano. So there is discussion about that, correct? Uh, oh, that, I was, that, I was, I was guessing. I thought you were going to tell me no. <laughs> there is discussion about that, but uh, the conclusion is that uh, they do. I mean, the shachiano is on on mitzvahs that you know women are fulfilling. So the fact is that it is a. In other words, they're lighting candles. They're 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 fulfilling those mitzvahs, even though they are on, you know, they are. On set time, they 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 do have set times. For example, um, uh, the mitzvah of sukkah, the mitzvah of, I mean, they're fulfilling these mitzvahs. You know, they they are dwelling in the sukkah. They don't have to dwell in the sukkah, but they are. It's a mitzvah that's time. It has a time frame, and um, and the uh, and the, but the 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 shachiano bracha does uh, does kick in. Well, but it is an interesting point you're making. That why is it? that they would, uh, in other words, they are exempt from mitzvahs ase, positive mitzvahs that are connected to time, uh, that would seem to contradict, the, the, the shachiano should contradict. That's an interesting point, so I have to, have to look into that. So um, the, uh, the next issue that comes up is the Gemara Tractate Menachos implies that no shachiano is set on tefillin or talis, but it does say that it's required for a lulav in building the sukkah. So that seems to be a contradiction. Which mitzvahs get Shachiyano and which don't? And the answer is, well, according to Rav Shri Ragoin, uh, only seasonal mitzvahs that have set times are obligated Shachiyano. So that would exclude the uh, tefillin and talis and other mitzvahs 
and it would only include mitzvahs such as the lulav and the sukkah. But according to uh, Taisvis, um, um, mitzvahs that have that are connected to joy in our seasonal require shechianu, and that would exclude a talis or a tefillin because there's no simcha joy or mila, which either because of pain or because it's less than 30 days from birth or circumcision, a few different reasons why the bris mila is excluded. The Rambam actually says that one recites shechianu on a new talis and tefillin since they're like new garments and fall under that category. So the Rambam says that the talis and tefillin do get a shachiyonah, not because of a mitzvah, but because they're actually new clothing. Talis is a new piece of clothing, and the tefillin. And, but others argue and say that that w- might work for talis, but not for tefillin, because it's not really a garment. But anyway, Rebbe, so that sort of touches Rebbe, on these uh, on this uh, discussion. Yes, uh, Ben. In the class, I thought we learned the tefillin. We didn't say it shachiyonah because it's leather. It comes from an animal. Right, right. We did have uh, that explanation. I should have wrote that as well. Correct, correct. We uh, we did have a point about the uh, the tefillin about them being leather. Okay. Um, it, it's true that that is another point. It, it wouldn't fit for talus, but it fits for tefillin. Right, correct, right. correct. Okay, yeah, I should have wrote Rabbi, that. Rabbi, okay. yes, uh, also um, with tefillin, there is a set time. It has to be in the daytime. Yeah, no, but it means a set time that it's a, a seasonal, seasonal and set time. Oh. Tractate Erevin implies that Shechiyonu on new fruit is not mandatory, but it's okay to do. It's like optional. And Bracha seems to imply that Shechiyonu is mandatory. So that is a, a big issue. And one of the explanations is that Shechiyonu on seeing a new fruit is optional, on eating it, if you eat it, then the shechianu is mandatory. Um, another explanation is that optional doesn't mean optional. It means it depends on how much joy you feel in your heart. So it uses the term optional, but it means it's dependent. That's really a better word. Even though the Hebrew word uses, used is more optional or rishos, but it, it what it means, it's like a borrowed term. The real, the, the proper term should be if you, depends on your feeling. If you feel the joy, reshut is permission. Reshut would mean permissible, but it, but it uses that term, but it doesn't mean it. According to this opinion, that it really means that um, it's um, it really means that it's uh, uh, something that you feel. If you feel the joy in your heart, then fine. Rabbi. Yeah, or if you feel a lot of joy. If you don't feel a lot of joy, then you don't recite it. Um, and there are other answers as well, the other options. Another option is that the optional means you don't have an obligation to look for it, but once you see it or read it, you are obligated to recite a shachianu. So the optional means you're not obligated to run after it. But if you do see it or you eat it, you say shechino. And finally, there are those opinions that definitely consider it optional. And how they reconcile the terminology is, uh, is at least unclear at this point to me. Yes, uh, Moshe. Uh, you say, now shoes, uh, shoes, you say shechino over the, the, the shoes when you for, when you buy a pair of shoes? No, I didn't say that. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you mentioned that before. I'm not saying now, but I thought maybe yesterday. I was just trying to recall. Because no, we I did. mentioned it before. We mentioned in the, when we spoke about the Shulchan Aruch and, and the, uh, the Taisvis mentions that uh, on uh, clothing that uh, uh, is not considered something very chashu, uh, you know, you don't say shachianoan, slippers and shoes. And so okay, what about somebody who buys, a, somebody who buys a, a, let's say a watch, a, a, a Rolex watch, for example? Yeah, so so we've also discussed at length that the Shachianos nowadays, a lot of people don't recite them. I see. And it has to do with the fact that, you know, how much joy do you have? You know, even, uh, I mean, you know, if you're very wealthy and you buy a Rolex watch, doesn't really, Rolex watch doesn't mean much. Maybe Rolls Royce might mean something, but a Rolex watch is, is not... But even a, well. even a Rolls Royce, even a Rolls Royce, if you buy a Rolls Royce, it's got leather seating. So would you say? Well, uh huh. I you think know, you're buying it for the name on the back, not for the leather. I don't know if that's a problem. But the um, the uh, the the thing is that if you talk about like a Rolex watch, so if a poor person has a Rolex, well, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't. I mean, what's he doing with it? 
how did why is he wasting his money on a Rolex watch? Of course. And a rich person, it's it's like uh, it's not no big deal. But anyway, the bottom line is nowadays people are very uh, lax about you know reciting Shachiyon of Bracha um, because because we don't know how much joy you know what I mean. We're not like it's so joyous as they used to be. I, I I mentioned at the end over here number four that it should be noted that the Shachiyon on holidays is obligatory. The discussion of optional is only regarding new fruits and new clothing. Okay, so now there's some practical questions. If you missed, if you couldn't follow with the way I uh, was going through this a little fast, don't worry, it's a little, com- it was confusing. And I, I, I just, I wanted it to be in writing before I shared the, uh, the confusing parts with you. Yeah. So uh, when we I just tomorrow, wanted to I was- tell you, I just wanted to tell you that I checked my phone again and I have it. Oh, okay. So anyway, so the bottom line is that there are seem to be some contradictions in the Gemaras, and they do need to be reconciled. And um, and we try to like touch upon them, different answers that are given. Maybe there are, it might have missed one or two. There might be some more answers that are uh, that are out there. But uh, it just gives you an idea of the discussions among the commentaries about the Shachianu uh, Bracha and. Uh, and then the practice, some practical questions, should one recite Shachiyana when seeing the new fruit or when eating it? And that we, we were mentioning earlier that there really is a Shachiyana bracha for seeing it, uh, which is uh, the story, the Gemara there in Erevin, where he saw the, 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 this new gourd and he recited a Shachiyana. By the way, you see over there that a gourd, which is uh, uh, a, a vegetable, also requires a Shachiyana which is uh, interesting. Some people think that you don't recite a shachiyano on vegetables. Uh, on, 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 uh, but the truth of the matter is it could, you could recite a shachiyano on vegetables, but it would apply only to vegetables that are seasonal and uh, that are not available throughout the year. So a lot of the vegetables we have are, are, are available throughout the year. You, know, you can get cucumbers all year round, tomatoes, um, potatoes, you know, cabbage, these are these are not seasonal, um, and but if if there would be a vegetable, like certain melons, a watermelon is seasonal, so that you would be able to say recite a shachianu. But something um, called you say something it? called something called summer squash. Uh huh. Maybe maybe yeah. It, it, I said I don't know how excited. Listen, kids are definitely not too excited about summer squash. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but maybe adults. I don't know if you maybe if you're. Uh, you know, uh, you've been on a diet for many years and then you eat the uh, summer squash that, uh, you know, you're all excited over it. Rabbi? You know, maybe you could say a shekhi, I don't know. Uh, Yes, Moshe. So down here, you know, we have monocots and dicots, you know, like bananas that grow certain times a year and, you know, down here. Um, so you're saying that monocots are really the, you say shekhi, because it's just one, once during the season, you're saying, or are you talking about two seasons? Well, there is a discussion in the commentaries and the halachic codifiers if twice a year is good is also okay. But definitely something, fruits and vegetables that are only available once, that only, uh, um, they only uh, uh, ripen once a year, they only grow once, once, once a year, that for sure is a, is a, is a reason to recite the bracha of Shechianu. But Possibly today in the store, you get them... Year. You get them any time because it, they that? come either from South from South America or from here. It's it's opposite seasons, so you but get it all year round. Everything. A lot of things we get all year round, like apples. Yeah, yeah. You're right, apples you get all year round, but there everything, are certain things: berries, everything. grapes, everything. Grapes, yeah, but there are things that you can't get all year round. There are things uh, like watermelon. You can't get watermelon. I don't know. You right. can get it, but it's more expensive. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I'll have to keep my eyes open. But uh, there are definitely oh. some areas, some 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 things that you can't get all year round. Um, like jackfruit. Peaches. How about peaches. jackfruit? Try getting a jackfruit all year round. It's, uh, peaches you know, and that plums. Here. Peaches, plums, exactly. Peaches and plums are not available all year round. Um, um but you're right. There are a lot of fruits that are available year round, all year round. You know, uh, mm-hmm. but like for, ex- for example, I think in Florida there's this um, a certain type of orange. It's only available uh, once a year. 
uh, what do they call them? Honey, uh, something, uh, some type of orange, a, a native or a Florida orange. Um, yeah, if it's native, you don't get it from somewhere else. Uh, they're yeah. called, Rabbi, they're called honey bells. Honey, 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 bells. honey bells. But you can't yeah. get them year round. They're only like no, available no, at a certain time no. of year. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure they tried to, to 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 produce them in other places, but I don't think they were able to. I mean, or they don't they don't ship them around, so you can only get them once a year. Honey bells. Thank you, man. Uh, okay. Um, so so the question is, when do you recite the shachiyanu? Should it be recited on the seeing the new fruit or when eating it? So again, when the rabbi saw the new gourd, he said the shachiyanu, not from eating it, from seeing it. So the initial rule was when seeing it. However, since some people are not happy only when they eat it, so it's customary to recite the bracha only when eating it. So in other words, the initial bracha was meant to be recited when you see the new fruit. And um, if one does not become so excited when eating the new fruit, should he skip the shachiyama? This is a very practical question. You know, sometimes, you know, we, the, everyone is... Uh, uh, reciting Shekhyanus and uh, it's a time to say, you know, you have this new fruit, but the truth of the matter is you're not that excited over it. So, you know, you, you, you come home and there are peaches, they just, you know, uh, plums, uh, white flesh peaches. So they see, you know, this is quite, uh, some people are really excited over them, but, uh, um, or cherries, they're, they're not available all year round. So you get, uh, you, you, uh, you know, and, uh, but you don't feel so excited. So there's an argument among the latest authorities regarding this. If you're really not excited about reciting Shachiano, but there, there are opinions that you can say the Shachiano. And the reason to recite it is that the rabbis established a rule on a new fruit. It's appropriate to recite the bracha. This bracha is fitting for the, for, to, it's, it is fitting to recite it. So, um, uh, so in other words, there, there is discussion about it, but there's definitely room to recite the bracha. Um, I was always worried the, op the the opposite. If you sometimes you you uh, you know you get this new fruit that you found in the store, and um, you know you're 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 uh, maybe excited to try it, but then you taste it and it's awful. <laughs> so was the bracha in vain? You know, because it happens. You you know you try this new this new fruit and it's really not so so good. So based on this idea that really the Shekhyanu is on seeing it. We happen to do it on eating it because just in case you're not excited over seeing it, but it would seem to be more connected to the fact that you're seeing a new seasonal fruit. You're seeing a new creation of Hashem. This is something exciting that Hashem created this new fruit. So it's not about it tastes good, it doesn't taste good. It's, there, there's an element of seeing it that really is the main requirement for the Shekhyanu. So I think this sort of answer is what, what always bothered me about, you know, if you taste the fruit and it's really not good, uh, it doesn't matter because you, your, your bracha is also is really on seeing it. Now, um, Rabbi, yes, I, I'm thinking, what is the problem with, with saying Shekhyanu because you are really thanking God for keeping you alive up to now. It has nothing to do with what you see or what you taste. You're thanking him for keeping you alive. Yeah, but keeping you alive to come to this moment. What's so special about this moment? So it has to be something unique about it that he let you see this new fruit. He let you That's see this new reason. holiday. He let you see something new that he brought. He left you, came, he kept you alive gave you life to reach this milestone. Yes. So what is this milestone, reason. special? That's one reason, but but you, you could have other reasons. Thank you for keeping me alive till now, you know. So that we do all day. We're saying we're thanking Hashem for keeping us alive. That uh, the whole, you know, your whole maybe, maybe we are. Mm -hmm. What do we you say know? all day? Thank you for keeping us alive. What do we say? Mm -hmm. well, you start is the closest thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have the Maida'ani in the morning. Yeah. You know. no, we said all day. Okay, yeah, Ashayatza, you're right. <laughs> Ashayatza, you know, the, 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 for sure. You know, all the all the, the brachas, they're all all. So you can say Shihiyanu too. Maida, and Maida 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 is not to Maida. keep you alive either. It's just recognizing what it takes to keep you alive. Right. Okay. Okay. 
But you're thanking Hashem, that he is healing you and keeping you, uh, right. you know. Really? Right. Uh, really? Yes, Moshe. Do we thank Hashem or do we acknowledge Hashem? For example, when we say a bracha over a piece of food, we're elevating the food. We're elevating it. Uh -huh. And we're, we're actually doing, you know, it's, it's an acknowledgement more than it is being grateful and thankful. I mean, that's more of like a Christian concept, isn't it? I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, because... You know, it's more of an acknowledgement. Instead of I mean, a thanks, it's an acknowledgement. We acknowledge Hashem. You know, we acknowledge it, but we're when we say a bracha, we're elevating the food. We're elevating it. You know, we're not, you know, it's it's a form of elevation. By okay, being Jewish, you are what does that do? It's elevation, God. then what does that mean? I mean, we're elevating we're elevating the, the food to a higher madre guy. You know, something. We're, we're, you know, it's not just. Uh, You're correct, but I don't know about. Uh, I mean, you know, the brachas include both of these ideas. In other words, there's brachas haida and there's brachas shavach. Really, there are two types of, of brachas, and uh, some brachas are more uh, praising Hashem, and some are thanks. Like, for example, we're not really thanking Hashem for the lightning, but we're praising Hashem that He created it. Right, so it's yeah. not really thanks, but then there's other brachas that are more thanks than than praise, or they're inclusive. They might be sort of like a combination of, of both. So, uh, uh, for example, the the foods is generally uh, you know they're more thanks, not just uh, praising. Okay, so the um, rabbi, yes, I was going to ask um, this uh, this idea of uh, the bracha on seeing. Is this similar to the, we make a bracha when we see um, the new, in the springtime, when the first blooms right. come on the trees, right. and that's on seeing, not on eating. So right, is that correct. similar? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a, definitely a similar idea of the new, the, the, you know, the new, um, like the new crop. Yeah. Sort of like a, a you know, Briais Tavis, new, new tree, new, yeah, very similar to this idea of Shachianu, um, that Hashem brought us this milestone and uh, the new of the new fruit, and um, and this is like on the year. It's like the yeah, it's, it's sort of a, a very similar uh, similar idea for the new year. Then, yeah, very uh, good connection. Okay, so uh, the question is wh whether Shachianu is recited before the bracha on the fruit or after the bracha on the fruit. So interestingly enough, Shachianu should be first since the main bracha is on seeing it. So therefore, when you see it, the bracha on the food is when you eat it. But the Shachianu bracha is really on seeing it. So really Shachianu should be first. Uh, but there are those that do the opposite and they say the Shachianu after. And the Mishnah Bura says that it's not a problem. So that, that's basically uh, the, the Lubavitch Minag is to say Shachianu first uh, based on this reason. Uh, that you know that it's really on on the main thing is seeing it, so the shachianu should be first, and then afterwards. Now we we do recite on Yom Tov, we do say shachianu after Bar Priyagafen and after the bracha on the uh, on the wine. But those those uh, those uh, you know in in that scenario where your your shachianu bracha is connected to the actual eating in the sukkah or connected to the uh, kiddush it's it's you know it's very connected to so it's not a problem and that's the way it that's the established way that the rabbis established the bracha but here you're reciting a shachianu bracha and it's um, the main bracha is for seeing therefore the shachianu would be recited first at least that's the way it's brought in the primagodim which is a main major halachic uh um source. Uh, and then the final question is, why are many people very lax when it comes to Shechianu on new clothes, but they seem to be careful to recite Shechianu on the new fruits? Logic would seem the opposite. More joy from new clothing or, or new dress, new suit, than from a uh, simple, small, little new, new fruit. You know, why do you recite the bracha? So I just gave two uh, possibilities. Um, uh, possibly because there's a view that holds Shachiyan is only recited on occasions that are seasonal and there are set times for them. So this would seem similar to the new fruits that are seasonal and not so similar to a new suit, which has no set time. 
So that would that's one of the reasons it's brought in the Piskei Chuvas. He, he brings this idea that if, if you want to compare the Shehachiyano Bracha uh, to the uh, to the obligatory uh, Shehachiyano Bracha for holidays, so the the new fruit is more similar than the new clothing because the new fruit is like more seasonal. It has like a set time in the year. It's always this always comes in April. You know the the the, these ch cherries are always available in November, you know, or something like, or, uh, you know, September, you know, so every, so, you know, there's, there's more of a connection to the seasonal, uh, set seasonal time. So anyway, that's one of the thoughts. Uh, and additionally, maybe one can say that the new fruit blessing is more about the joy of seeing the wonders of Hashem, creating the new season of new and unique fruits, rather than the enjoyment of eating it. So it's, it's the enjoyment of, of seeing it, and this is possibly more joy than the enjoyment of acquiring and wearing a new suit. In other words, acquiring, wearing a new suit, you're not really thinking so much about Hashem as much as you're thinking about your enjoyment from it. But the uh, the, the the beautiful new fruit is more connected, more you're seeing Hashem's work in it more. It's uh, created directly from Hashem. People make the new suits and they... Uh, um, design but don't it. you but don't you have to say maaseh bereshit if it's straight from Hashem? Well, it, this is a um, you know it, it's allowing you to live to see this new this you know this new fruit. It's yeah, a but more you could of say a, the same on the ocean. It's a slightly more detailed bracha than you know you could say maaseh maaseh bereshit for everything. Yeah. You know. But this is well, a little more detail. Right. So the idea is that this bracha of, uh, of Shechianu is that you're living to see this new fruit that you're actually able to enjoy looking at it and, and seeing it. You know, it's not like lightning where, you know, you're, you're, this is an uh, act of creation, yeah. but this is more specific enjoyment that you're, uh, connect, you're getting from it, even just seeing it. It's a certain really? enjoyment that you have from seeing it. So maybe that's why people are a little more careful to say the 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 the, the, the new fruit bracha. Rabbi? Yes, Moshe. What about medical procedures? Do you say Shekhyan over a medical procedure? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, you know, I email afterwards. Or, you know. going to, that's what I thought. Yeah, but that's what, somebody asked me to ask you that, so I just wanted to... Uh, Okay, so anyway, that's a, this is a rough draft. Don't uh, use this as your halachic guide, but uh, it's more for the uh, academic, uh, you know, if you want to look into it. And maybe when we come across more areas of Shekhyana, we'll be able to, to go more uh, I into think it. the halacha is like Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan, according, at least according to the, uh, right, it, it seems that that's the, Tetoisus mentioned that, but there is a Rajba that says the, that's uh, or, or, or in a Rambam, maybe also that that says the halacha followed uh, the first. The halacha follows Rabbi Yechina, but the question is the second view or version of the first version, uh, you know, because yeah. there were two versions in the Gemara, right? So I don't know. In it, the end of my essay, I wrote it Rabbi Yechina. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did learn that Tais good. Okay, so getting back to the Gemara now. Uh, I did want to also mention. Uh, I did look up the the actual wording for the. Um, for the uh, medicine that uh, David had asked me yesterday, um, the the common it, it seems that the common uh, uh, wording of it, the text of that, is similar to the to the way the Gemara says it. But in for some reason, there is another. Uh, there is another way of saying it, and that was similar to what David said. Your, your, I think that was the way you said it. Uh, I think I think it's brought in like Lubavitch uh, Minhagim to say that. It's a difference of one word or so, but it's just a, a question of how to, you know, if you want to say it exact. Uh, again, we don't, the Minhag is not to say Hashem's name. So you just say, He wrote some of Fanecha, or Shayia. Uh, Rabbi, I looked it up on Chabad.org and I put in yeah. blessing on medicine. Uh -huh. So they, they said that they, that they, they talked about different um, types of blessing, but the, 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 the final thing was 
they said that we say in Lubavitch these four words, the Hebrew zone, Shia Lerifua. They don't have the Z. Without the word Li? Without the Li, without the Z. It's just the Hebrew zone, Shia Lerifua. Uh huh. That's two, interesting. Two different, two different rabbis from Chabad.org, uh, Rabbi uh -huh. Edelman and another rabbi. Uh huh. One and they here. That's very interesting. They all mean the same. Uh huh. Let me just pull something up over here. One second. I got all these things here. All these windows. Oh, boy. Um. Just one second. There's a website called Ask the Rav, and I think it's Rabbi Braun. Um, and um, he's a major authority. And uh, let me just see if he, I think he's. I, I I went to Chabad.org and I just put in the search right. blessing seems... on or prayer on medicine. Huh. And the very first article was, uh, was right. this. Huh. Wow. Okay. Well then. Uh... The, that's a medication when you say medicine. You talk about medication only. Right, right. Yeah. What is his source? Seder Brachus Utfilas. Yeah. So that's funny because I saw it mentioned in the same oh, Kitzur Shulchan Aruch 61.4. Um, yeah, let's pull up Kitzur Shulchan Aruch and Sepharia here. Halacha. 61. So, Shayili uh, Asek Zelarafua. Um, yeah, so, uh huh. But Asek is a business, so I don't know what business has right. to do so with that's medication. Why, that's the reason there's, the, it seems like that's the reason why they, why there are those that, 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 um, that don't say Asek. That, in other words, that's the reason for the other, the other version of this bracha. But um, I believe it's Shaya Lila Rafua. Uh, but I see he says if it this you're way. You're the one that's going to take it. Oh, I uh, where did I look it up? I. Anyway, I'll have to look up that source. I see the source that they bring. Okay, the bottom line is that uh, there are two. There are two common versions of it, and uh, and uh, and that's the uh, um, yeah. That's for for medicine. No one should ever have to take medicine. We should all uh, be healthy. Okay, the um, the Gemara that we're up to. Okay, so we mentioned also about reciting three parshias of Shema. So I saw one of the reasons why it's customary to, to recite all three paragraphs of Shema when you go to sleep, even though our Gemara seems to say all you need is the first paragraph, and some say maybe you need the second paragraph, but uh, it's brought down to maybe recite all three. Even the Mishabur brings it down. And the reason is because the three parshias of Shema are connected to the 248 words of the Shema, which are connected to the 248 limbs of the body. So it's to bring safety to the body, it's advisable to say all three paragraphs of the Shema when you go to sleep. Um, Actually, I had a question on that. In the morning, when you say the Shema, when you get up, do you say all three paragraphs? Because you go to shul and you pray and you say all three paragraphs again. Right. You so say the Shema again. Right. So, so the thing is, in the morning, 
if you're going to miss the time for Kriyashma, which nowadays in, uh, let's say in Florida, it's somewhere around 10 o'clock. Now, when we switch the clocks, it's going to switch an hour. But, okay. but uh, it, at this point, it's somewhere in the 10 o'clock, you know, ballpark. Um, Rabbi, I think that the con- Congress uh, changed it, that there's not going to be any more switching of the clocks. They passed something uh, just a couple Don't of worry, months ago. Sunday, the time is changing. And they're not going to change clocks anymore. I, I, yeah. I don't think so. I think they made more time that we changed the clocks. No. Sunday, they no? said it's changing. I think they, they made it earlier. They were even changing it an extra week or two weeks or something. I don't know exactly. Um, but maybe not. Okay, I don't know. I, I, wasn't, I don't follow really the news. We'll see this Sunday. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, but uh, uh, the thing is like this. Uh, if, if you're davening in a minion that davens late, so you're, the shul where you say Shema is going to miss the time for Shema. Because but by us, they, you start at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So if yeah. you start the davening at 10 o'clock, you don't get up to the Shema till 1030. I see. So okay. because of that, you should definitely say Shema before. Oh, now, okay. also, with all three paragraphs? With all three paragraphs. Okay. And repeat Hashem Alekechem Emes. Yeah. And not only that, but if you're going to eat something before you go to shul, which most people do, yes. they eat or drink. So it's customary to say all three paragraphs of Shema before you eat, before the, if you're eating before right, davening, right. before you eat, you should say the whole Shema. I do all so of it before words, I eat, yeah. Right, so you say the whole Shema before you eat, the whole Shema, not just the one paragraph. You yeah, say yeah. the whole Shema before you eat something, even a snack. But uh, it's, it's not appropriate to eat before you say Shema. So that would be the... Uh, but here the Gemara is talking about going to, before you go to sleep. Going to sleep uh, is definitely a reason to say all three paragraphs of the Shema for, for safety. You know, for your uh, for for, uh, for safety before you go to sleep. There's like uh, you know mystical things going on. A person sleeps and a person should be should be safe. So it's advisable to say all three paragraphs of Shema, even though many Sidurim only have one paragraph. Um, and then uh, we went through all these different brachas that a person recites. Uh, and um, uh, we uh, also mentioned that one of the reasons that the rabbis established these brachas is because these brachas are connected to, the brachas are connected to uh, reciting a hundred brachas a day that a person is obligated to recite. And therefore, um the rabbis established uh, these specific brachas that, which um, help help add up to a hundred brachas. Mm. Now, the um, and the specific brachas also give us uh, appreciation to Hashem for each thing that Hashem gives us. And I did mention also yesterday, and it's based on one of the Taisus in over here that the um, Taisus talks about about the. Uh, some type of a uh, head covering that uh, when a person puts it on, he recites the bracha of Oiter Yisrael Basafara. Taisha says that only if you benefit, only if you actually put it on, but if you're not, it knows if you sleep, if you're in bed, you can't recite this bracha and you can't recite the bracha for clothing. You have to benefit from the, from the clothing you're wearing or from the, or from the, uh, in other words, it has to be putting it on and like benefiting from it rather than just, uh, um, you can't say, say these brachas if you're not actually benefiting from, from these items. And so, um, and Tysus brings a proof from the Gemara and Megillah, which uh, um, yesterday Isaac had mentioned that, uh, that the, uh, there, there it talks over there about a person who, ne- who was blind from birth, that uh, a, a person does not recite, a person who's blind from birth does not, uh, or, or it's a questionable over there if they um, 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 can recite the bracha of Yotzer or of Arichoshach if they recite that bracha, if they can lead the service and recite a certain bracha about thanking Hashem for the luminaries. And um, Taisa says, you see over there that uh, the only reason a person could say that bracha, according to one opinion, is because um, it, 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 the luminaries are benefiting him. So you see, you have to benefit from it. 
So he wants to say the same thing would apply here, that these brachas, you have to actually benefit from the actual thing. You can't just recite the bracha because you went to Shul and it's in the Siddur. Now, many of the opinions argue on this Taisvis, and they say you don't have to benefit from these things. You don't have to, because you're reciting it because it's part of the daily phrases of Hashem, not specifically connected to you. And so just because you are not wearing this extra hat or you're not uh, putting your feet on the floor, you still can recite all of these brachas. So Taisvis sees it as being a more personal nature, that this is connected to your specific uh, benefit in this world of wearing clothing, and um, and if you're uh, and you specific benefit of stand being able to stand up, but if you actually are sitting down and you're not standing up, then uh, and you're you're staying seated to the, the whole day for whatever reason, uh, uh, you're uh, according to Tysus, you don't recite that bracha, and um, uh, there are, uh, th th so there is the view that you need to benefit and actually do all these things. The other view is you don't have to. It's about the general world benefiting from these things. And then there's a third opinion that says some of the brachas are more connected to you and some of the brachas are more connected to just thanking Hashem in general for the the, the world being able to have, uh, you know, have these uh, uh, goodness from Hashem. So these are, uh, the three views about benefiting and uh, actually having these, uh, actually uh, fulfilling these uh, um, activities to recite the, the bracha or not. Okay, so then the uh, Gemara continues here and um, it's going to talk about, I'm just not sure if we should continue. Uh, we only have two minutes left. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's begin. The Gemara, uh, we're on page 60B, and uh, the Gemara here is, uh, let's see, about two-thirds of the way down the page. Um, the Gemara says, Chayev Adam Levarech. A person is obligated to recite maybe more like three-quarters of the way down the page. We're about uh, 12 lines up from the bottom. Chayev Adam Levarech. A person is obligated to thank Hashem for the bad, the same way he thanks Hashem for the good. So the Gemara asks, my, what does this mean? My chayev levarech ala rak, shem shabarach ala teva. What does it mean that you thank Hashem for the bad, the same way you thank Hashem for the good? Ilema, if it means, kashem shem levarech ala teva, ha teva ha metiv, if it means that the same way you thank Hashem uh, for the good, that you say the bracha, thank you Hashem, that you're good, and you do acts of goodness, ha teva ha metiv, um, do you say that bracha for the bad as well? When Hashem does something bad to you, at least in a revealed way, it looks bad. Are you going to thank Hashem, who is hatoiv vehametiv, who is good and he does good? Are you going to thank Hashem for, for uh, and say those words? Thank you, Hashem. You're good and you do good. When he does, when when you just lost uh, uh, your business, just went bankrupt, um, uh, are you going to thank Hashem? Uh, uh, and say, didn't we learn in the Mishnah, good uh, uh, tidings. Person says, he is good. You thank Hashem that you are good. Blessed are you, Hashem, that you are good and you do acts of goodness. And that's for good tidings. Albasiris writes, on bad tidings, you say, blessed are you, Hashem, who is the true judge. So it would seem like that's the proper bracha when bad things happen. Um, just like when you hear bad news. So, when you see it in front of you and something bad happens to you or something, you, it would seem that maybe Dion Hamas would be right. But what does it mean the, what the Mishnah says? The same way you say the bracha for bad, you're supposed to say for good, doesn't mean the same bracha because the bracha is different. It's actually one is, is Hateva Metev, the other is Dion Hamas. So Amar Rava, Rava says, Nitzrucha, the Mishnah is not talking, it doesn't, isn't needed, Ella, to rather only to tell you this law. It's not telling you the, the, the wording of the bracha. It's rather to tell you, to accept it. Let me uh, mute everyone here. To accept it with joy that that's what the bracha really is, that even when something bad happens, a person should accept it with joy the same way they would uh, they would rejoice when something good happens. And um, the reason to have joy is that a person will say, 
that his sins are being uh, cleansed. So if a person thinks about it in that way, he would feel like Hashem is uh, being kind by cleansing his sin so that he will be able to be pure. Sometimes people think that, you know, that they, they, they don't realize the, the, the blessing involved in, 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 uh, in, uh, you know, in, 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 in rebuke or in so, you know, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a a uh, you know could be considered a a, a a kindness when someone is you know someone tells you off and sort of like directs you to go on the you know do the right thing and make the right choices and not make the mistake again or something. But a lot of times we can't handle it. We don't like to. We don't like rebuke. We don't like punishments. But the fact is that the uh, you know, person could uh, could save could save you a million dollars if he if he rebuked you and told you how you do things. You should do it this way. You won't have a problem with this. Yeah, it could save you crazy trouble or crazy. Issues. The same thing is is punishments that we're you know Hashem uh, is giving us something that's uh, a challenge, but uh, really it's 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 the greatest thing because it's removing a sin that we had when we were younger. We did this wrong, like you know, child starts up. You know why your child is starting up with you? Because when you were younger, you started up with your parents. So this is like a cleansing for your sin uh, when when you know for when you were younger. Or some other issue that uh, you know. So, so these are cleansings that we have to be thankful to Hashem that He wants to cleanse us from our sins instead of leaving us the way we are, and we'll end up either never correcting our our actions or never uh, never cleansing ourselves and, and possibly losing out in the world to come and so on and other and getting punished in the next world, which is a lot worse than punishment in this world. Our rabbis tell us in the in the Tanya that uh, mentions over there that uh, any any punishment in this world is uh, is tiny compared to a punishment in the world to come, because um, uh, the, uh, the 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 world to come everything is magnified. So uh, if you want to get a reward, take it in the world to come because it'll be much bigger. If you want to get punished, take it in this world because it'll be much smaller. Than in the next world, so uh, this world is everything is, is 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 minimized. The next world, everything is maximized. So make sure to get the the punishments in this world and the rewards in the next world. And it has something to do with the fact that if the sun moves a million miles in heaven, the shadow on Earth only moves a few inches. Somehow the sun has to move thousands, hundred thousand miles in heaven or something. I don't know. To in order for the shadow to move a drop, only a drop. Find out that means that everything in heaven is maximized. Everything on earth is minimized. Anyway, zayigus on everyone, and uh, we'll see you Mitzvah Hashem tomorrow. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a good day, everybody.